is Jackie from Bronx Bobbles, once again bringing you another exciting video. I just love bringing these videos to you, and I'm so excited when I get a chance to do so. So today's video is about a few of my favorite things. So many of you have been interested in knowing a little bit more about what's in my jewelry box. So come with me, come a little closer, and I will show you a sneak peek at my jewelry box and we'll talk about some of these pieces some interesting stories so without further ado let's get started first thing I want to show you is this 1970s bangle look at this hunker of a bangle it's really big oversized it has ombreish look from yellow and it goes to green and into blue now the reason why I purchased this and I bought this at a consignment shop for I think $10 was because when I was a little girl, I remember having these Lutzite rings and any child that was brought up and raised in the 70s probably know what rings I'm talking about. Those Lutzite rings bring back so many memories. All I know is that it was one of the first things that I fell in love with as far as jewelry is concerned. And I had never seen a bangle that was this big in this shape. It's almost like a ring for a giant. And so when I saw this, I just had to have it. And so this is one of my favorite things, a Lucite 1970s ombre bangle bracelet in the shape of a ring. Sticking with the bracelets for just a little bit, what about these sterling silver bracelets? Now, I'll show you this set first. This is a hollowed out bamboo shaped bangle bracelet sterling silver. The interesting thing about this bangle is that it says here, really, really tiny, you can almost hardly see it. It says made in Spain, July, and it has a year stamp on there. Unfortunately, it's such a way that I can't distinguish what it is. I just think that these bangles are beautiful and bamboo are symbolic. And I forget what the symbolism of the bamboo is, but I'll make sure to put it down here so that you know for next time. These are a really good find and one of my favorite things. Along the lines of that, those bangles is this sterling silver bypass bangle. Now, I have a couple of these bypass bracelets in Lucite, but this is the first time I saw one in Sterling. And I love this for its sculptural value. Uh, it looked like a piece of sculpture that you can place on top of a book or leave it on a shelf. And it almost has like a, a, a little snake look to it. And uh, I just think the simplicity of it, the clean lines, just, just beautiful, hollowed out silver but it still has some weight so it's not a flimsy silver that's going to bend and try all my might i can't move it at all so it's a thick hollowed out silver but still a really good quality they don't make pieces like this anymore and i just the little details of the bamboo design is just superb really really nice piece these are cameo earrings made in italy they're surrounded with tiny little seed pearls and it's in a casing that's sterling silver. So this is a Martin piece, and I believe I bought this from like either HSN or QVC, and I wanna say over 10 years ago, I purchased these, these earrings, and it's just so beautifully well carved, and in the back of a lot of cameos it is the signature of the artist. So when you look at your, at your cameos, Take a look at the back of the cameo, and depending on the light, you will see the signature of the artist on the cameo. So look out for that when you get your um, your um, cameos. From a company called M and M Scogliano <laughs> I totally destroyed that name. Look at what they look like on. Isn't that gorgeous? Here is. <sighs> an amazing piece of jewelry. It's almost as if you're gonna be work, walking down the street as an art piece yourself when you wear these earrings. These are mobile earrings that are just phenomenal. Comes from 
studio that's called Studio Sofia Sofia. And they're custom made pieces that you can request these to be made in different colors. So each, every one of these little mobile pieces can be done in different colors. This one happens to be, and this is the way I purchased them, in orange, uh, they're just, they're incredibly beautiful. I just love them so much. Uh, these earrings, these mobile earrings, remind me of Alexander Coulter. And I am such a huge fan of his artwork, but also his jewelry. So he created some jewelry pieces that are worth thousands and thousands of dollars. Now these are inspired by an artist, Matthew Ronay. And if you saw Matthew Ronay's art pieces, they're really sculptural in nature. They're very, very colorful. Like all these colors in the rainbow and these primary type colors are colors that he uses. His artwork is modernistic, it's very sculptural, it's very abstract. Um, it has these lines that are not organic at all. They just, they're just, you know, uh, creative and, and, and abstract. Um, and these earrings were inspired by his artwork. Now, what do you think? You like? When you switch this way, they move, and when you switch that way, they move. And they're just a really, really wonderful piece of jewelry. Very unique, very modernistic, you know, and I'm just thrilled to have them. And they're definitely one of my top 10 favorite earrings to have. Moving on, we're gonna go a little old school. We're gonna go back to the Victorians. And I wanna show you this amazing piece of jewelry that I found at the thrift store. Here it is. Now, some of you might be familiar with this. This is called a Chatelaine. Now, Chatelaine is the precursor to purses, or as we say in Spanish, carteras. And they're also precursors to pockets. And so the Victorian woman, the lady of the house, when she had, you know, to do some sewing or she had to, you know, write letters or, or anything that she needed to do, she would put it on her chatelaine. And so sh these chatelaines are typically made to hook onto the woman's belt. This one, which is incredibly beautifully decorated, it's huge, it's so big, it's sterling silver. It's sterling silver. It has, instead of a hook, which is typically what chatelaines have, it's this C pin, which for me, I like even more. Each of these, this one happens to have five. Sometimes they have three, sometimes they have six, sometimes they have even more different um, chains that hang down. And this one happens to have these little, um, what I used to call, um, you know, fob, pocket watch, uh, chains with, for the fobs where they open up so you can remove the pieces and interchange them. So for example, if that particular day you're doing your sewing, you can pull all these other ones out and just put the ones that have the sewing. And each one of these things are, are functional in nature. So let's go through some of the ones that I happen to have on this Chatelaine. Uh, this here is <laughs> so cute. It's a tiny little pocket knife. I guess the precursor to the Swiss Army knives. And this one has a little knife. And it also has this little tiny buttonhole. In the Victorian times, they had shirts that had these tiny little buttons. And especially for the boots. They're lace-up boots. And just to get those little tiny buttons in, you might need a button um, hook. And that's what this is. Next thing is this amazing, oh my gosh. Look at this. It's a little piece of papers, but the paper, these are not papers. And if you see them, they have this little grain in them. And I, I don't know what this is made from. It's sort of a plastic, although I know it's not plastic. It looks organic in nature. And then you take a little washcloth and you wipe it down and you can reuse it. And it's a good way to take down notes, perhaps notes about things that need to be repaired in the house or food that you want to cook or um, chores that need to be done and that's what the lady of the house would be doing with this and with that comes this pencil and this pencil 
has a retractable feature to it. And at the tip of this is graphite that they would put on here. And so this is the pencil that you would use to write your notes. And isn't that fabulous? And then in the middle here is a little bottle of perfume that you can use. Isn't this awesome? I just think it's so fabulous. You could probably put some perfume in here or what about a swig of whiskey? I think that's what I would probably put in here. The last piece of the Chatelaine is this tiny little dime holder. I'm old enough to remember back in the days, I don't wanna tell you how long ago it was, but it was long enough where there were telephone booths all around New York City that all you needed was a little dime to make a phone call. And so in here is big enough for a little dime. This one in particular is a very, very special dime. It's a mercury dime. And it has uh, a little mercury on there. And it's just so adorable. I'm so glad that it was left in there. This dime says 1941, the year before World War II started. So this is a Chatelaine that I purchased at a thrift store. I think I paid $100 for it, but it's definitely well worth more than that. A lot of money, but I just thought it was so unique and I've always wanted one when I was into my Victoriana. So when I saw it, I just took the plunge and purchased it. And I'm so glad that I did because it's definitely one of my favorite things. In some of my other videos, I show off some of the boxes that I collect to put my jewelry in. I'm always looking out for special, unique boxes, and the boxes usually give you an indication of what I'm gonna be putting inside. So when I found this beauty, OMG, I knew I had to have it. This is a Japanese lacquer box, and that has gold leaf bottom, and then the top has a brush, some brushed gold on it. And when you open it up, look at the inside of the box. It's covered in gold and in silver leaf in this beautiful, amazing pattern. And so this box I purchased for $1.99 at the thrift store. The unique part about it also is that it has these beautiful little legs with the houses inside. My carnelian necklaces. And uh, can I tell you, this is definitely one of my favorite things. Look at this gorgeous, gorgeous carnelian necklace. Oh, it's just so beautiful, the color of it. I mean, this is the type of, of lipstick I would be wearing. I wear a lipstick called CoverGirl Toast of New York that's almost in this sort of shade. I've worn it for years. And so I've always, always loved carnelian, the shade of it, the it's that red and brown mixture together and I'm sure they have healing properties which I'm going to look up and I'm going to put down below and recently I saw the crown I fell in love with a necklace that she wore that was very very similar here is another example of carnelian that I just think is stunning now these these are done in the 1950s sort of way and um, I think I purchased this about two year, two or three years ago. And look at that. It's just so beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? Look out for these boxes. And this is a special box. And look how adorable this looks fit in this box. It just elevates the beauty of these this piece. So it's another one of my favorite, favorite things. This is a piece that I recently got. I had a very, very good friend. Um, she was my college roommate. She was my maid of honor at my wedding. And even though the marriage didn't last, my friendship did. And unfortunately, she passed in October of cancer. And her mother graciously had an event in Connecticut so that the people who knew her in New York was able to attend a memorial since we weren't able to fly during the COVID situation. And at the memorial, she presented me with a bag of jewelry and in there was this amazing brooch. Now look at how stunning this brooch is. It is so gorgeous, so beautiful. It's a rose 
approach encrusted in colored rhinestones and pink and blush and green and verdigris and it's so precious to me because it belonged to my dear dear friend and I'm gonna try to get through this without crying but this to me is my memorial piece for my girlfriend and I will treasure it forever and ever and I think about her and God bless you I think about you every day so that my friends is a sneak peek into my jewelry box collection and I hope to do more and more of these because I have plenty to show you so thank you so much you tell me which was your favorite piece uh, and why and don't forget to hit like because that's the only way our tribe is going to find uh, videos like mine out there is if people like you who are generous are going to hit that like button and leave me a comment you guys are the best with your comments. I just love them, love them, love them. And my subscribership is slowly increasing. And that makes me super happy. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Y con mucho, mucho amor. Say hi, Lila. Say hi, Lila. That's it for her.